Well, I don't, as a matter of fact, think there's ever been any doubt that the government would publish some kind of paper before it started uh, negotiating. You would do, wouldn't you? I I'm not sure that it's going to tell us anything very much that we don't know already, and I don't think it should. Right. And, and, and when they say publish a plan, can you just give us a clue? Do you think that's like three tweets or that's a... A 400-page oh, no, white well, paper or a, a I, I, set of volumes? How, how do I know how long it'll be? But, uh, you know, I'm sure that Whitehall will uh, create something mellifluous and, uh, <laughs> you know, serious. And so Executive but summary. I, oh, all summary. of the above, yes, yeah. exactly. But I very much <laughs> doubt, and I hope, it said that it won't uh, say anything uh, very material that hasn't been said already. We, we're pretty clear, actually, what the outlines are. We're leaving. We're leaving the single market. Right. We're leaving the customs union. We're going to have control over our own migration. If, if you want that, mm. it implies that you're All leaving the, the single market. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be able to negotiate our own free trade deal with the rest of the world. If you want that, you have to leave the customs union. So that's all pretty clear. And then you have a whole pile of uh, very mitty gritty bits of negotiating to do about how you deal with the European arrest warrants and information exchange and so on. And then you come to the big issue, which is what kind of trading relationship we're going to have. And the truth is, there is no one alive today who knows what right. kind of trading relationship we're going to end up with. And so you can't possibly declare a plan, and it would right. be crazy but, but, but to the put all your cards is, on the table. Yeah, the, the, the objective is clear. We want as much trade and as open sure. trade as, of course. as possible. What is amazing is, you have just spelled out, out of the customs union, out of the single market, free trade de deals with other countries, you have just spelled it out so much more clearly than any member of the government has. Why is that, do you think? Why well, have they not been actually, so Actually, I don't think that's true. I mean, I, I uh, you know, I engage in this sort of unusual habit of reading uh, what is produced, and actually, I think everything I've just said is either said you or implied. You can infer. Yes. yes. I think yes. you can infer all of that. Yes. But when Theresa May has asked, you know, a perfectly straightforward question, is it possible we'll be making payments to the EU as part of a trade deal? Everybody knows the answer to that is yes. David Davis has said that is yes. She says, well, we want a red, white and blue Brexit. Why can't you just say, yes, we would not like to make payments, but it's possible that they'll be in there, as David Davis said. That's, you're much clearer than, than she is, or David Davis is, or Boris Johnson is much, much clearer. Well, on the question of payments, which I've been you know, rowing that mm. uh, boat for some while now, I think there, you don't want to pay an indefinite amount, uh, but there are some things to be worth paying mm. some amounts for. Particularly, incidentally, I think access to the sale of stocks and bonds and things by uh, financial institutions in Britain, which otherwise you might not be able to do. And if we weren't able to do that, we might lose a lot of investment in the city and the rest of you know, Edinburgh and all the rest of it. Um, I think it's very wise of the Prime Minister, however, not to get pinned down on any of these things because she didn't want to start fighting now what is going to be quite a difficult domestic uh, political issue in advance of knowing what she does or doesn't have to give away. And she certainly doesn't want to get into a position where someone asks the next question, which is, how much would you be willing to pay? <laughs> right. How do you know? But you do know you don't want to pay more than you need to. So, you know, I think actually her whole instinct is to keep the cards close to her chest, and I think she's right to do that. And actually, I think it's crazy for everyone else to demand more than we, as you rightly admit, actually already know. So a red, white and blue Brexit is simply a stall, just to be quite clear. I think when it's, she says it's that, a it's a just way, a stall. A I'm not saying, saying anything. Exactly, it's a way of saying <laughs> we're going to get the best deal we can, which is, after all, what you'd ask a sensible Prime Minister to get for this country. Right. Um, if we have a plan and we know what we want, why are we delay? Why don't we just invoke Article 50? We know what we're up to now. Why, but, 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 why wait four months till March? Well, uh, as you may know, I, uh, I teamed up with some other uh, colleagues to suggest that we should not appeal to the Supreme Court, which I think is I was a going to come slightly to tricky thing yeah, to do anyway, because yeah. who knows what they're going to decide about yeah, a whole well, range of other constitutional issues. Yeah. And I thought we could put a bill to the Parliament. I think it's abundantly clear. I've been on programmes with John McDonnell, he was very clear that the Labour Party is going to vote for Article 50, we're going to vote for Article 50. So I can't see any reason why we shouldn't actually get a bill very quickly through Parliament and get a move on. Now, I do see that there's something going on which, of course, is easy for you and me and really quite difficult inside Whitehall. There's a huge welter of detail about a whole series of things which are not really deeply material to the issues, the big issues we're talking about, but nevertheless have to be sorted out. You know, what exactly do you do about the PRUM information systems? How do you deal with uh, the kinds of cooperation there are on security and intelligence and uh, policing right. and so on? So they you need know, to get the detailed ducks in a row before exactly, they head I think that they're trying to spend the time getting there. I certainly, right. in a very restricted time when I was dealing with this, I could see opening up before me <laughs> right. the ghastly prospect of all those details. You would rather they 
they hadn't gone to the Supreme Court. And one of the reasons you thought that is, A, it just delays everything, but also there is a risk that the Supreme Court will potentially go further than the High Court did in giving Parliament or devolved assemblies and Parliament rights. What, what is the risk you're worried about there? Well, I'm partly just worried about uncharted uh, waters and goodness knows which risks. Uh, if you get 11 Supreme Court judges um, who are very intelligent, very serious people, I think it's only the attacks on the judiciary were, uh, from some quarters, uh, not politicians mainly, but the media, were utterly despicable and totally wrong. Uh, they, the judges tried to do their job, which is to judge what the law is. Now, the point is, in this area, the law is very indistinct. We don't really know what our constitution is. We haven't got a written constitution. <laughs> right. In my view, we ought to have one, but I'm uniquely of that view. I know nobody else shares it in this country. Uh, because we don't have a written constitution, if you ask 11 very highly intelligent, very learned people, what is the constitution, you may find out things you didn't want to know. And I, I have no idea what the result will be, but I fear that there may be limits on the prerogative, for example, in, in ways that limit future governments from taking actions that would be sensible. And I don't think we really need to have that. Nevertheless, we're in the middle of the trial now, so it'll happen. It'll happen. Oliver Letwin, look, thanks so much, Thank so you much very for your much. clarity. Thank you.